I know Raheem Sterling wasn't everyone's first choice, but the position we were in on deadline day, we had to get someone. And what we did end up getting was a player who's worked with Mikel Arteta, who's had success in this league, and who I think if he can get anything near the levels we saw a few years ago, we've actually got a player that can contribute massively. In this breakdown, we're going to talk about his history, but more importantly, what we've seen, especially when he's played under a uh, Mikel Arteta-style coach side. Of course, Pep Guardiola's Man City, when Arteta was assistant manager. We're going to see how some of that is going to come to play in this current Arsenal team because I really wouldn't be judging him too much on his last two years at Chelsea what is there to unlock that we didn't really see in these last two years playing his football in London now he's at the red half of London but let's go into firstly a reminder of his numbers and a reminder of what this guy's achieved because of course right several several Premier League titles of course he's played for Liverpool he's played for Man City and for Chelsea I mean Arsenal are the fourth of the traditional big six that he is playing for but the big thing that stands out when it comes to his history is his numbers I mean have a little look here right I mean the the numbers are phenomenal I mean okay look he started getting regular sort of game time with 24 appearances in the 2012-2013 campaign gained two goals two assists but he built on that with nine and five seven and seven six and two in his first season at Man City but when he started to really pick it up especially when Pep Guardiola arrived 18 goals and 11 assists in 33 Premier League games in the 2017-18 season 17 and nine the season after that 20 goals in the 2019-20 campaign let's not read those assists doesn't look quite as good but with 10 and seven 13 and five and then even though last year Chelsea were terrible eight goals four assists it's not it's not too bad look you'd expect better Chelsea would have expected better but he's someone who has got serious output with 123 goals and 62 uh, assists in the Premier League for Liverpool, Man City and Chelsea. It's really not bad for a body of work, 12 years of work. And this is also a reminder that he's kind of been on the stage for a long, long time. I think we do have to remember that when we're talking about Raheem Sterling. You know, at 29, these probably aren't his prime years because he's been playing football for such a long time. But a reminder that this is someone who's been an output machine. A big part of that is because of his movement, his understanding of what positions to get into. We're going to talk about that in a little bit when we go to the tactical pad. But more numbers I think you'll need to be aware of are... The the fact that he has played almost as much on the right as he has on the left. As you can see here from Transfer Mark, 269 games across all competitions and throughout his career for all the pro clubs he's played for out on the left 269 games 172 out on the right wing he's played as a false nine as a second striker he's even played in the 10 which is interesting because that reminds me of the form role he had in his kind of best season at Liverpool but again more on that when we get to the tactical pad now all this sort of sounds good right he can play on the left as much as he can on the right he scored lots of Premier League goals you knew all this what did he do last season in terms of pure stats and data that really stood out well luckily it happens to be things that I think Arsenal could definitely do with have a little look at his percentile rankings and these are some of the things that because by the way there's plenty of sort of stats and data he didn't rank well in but these are the ones he did and it's interesting what kind of comes through because it fits it fits a lot of the Arsenal needs for progressive carries progressive carrying distance carries into the penalty area and successful take-ons actually as Chuck in take-ons attempted too he's ranking really highly for getting the ball to feet running at players getting his team up the pitch when he was playing for Chelsea compared to other attacking midfielders and wingers too he's also created a load of uh, shot creating actions via take on so often when he's taking players on it's leading to a shot and he's ranking really highly for touches in the attacking penalty area progressive passes received as well the ball is getting to him a lot through balls shots on target percentage so how many of his shots are actually on target and shot creating actions via fouls drawn and via defensive actions too those are some of the things that he's standing out for so while people are worried that he's maybe lost his pace his flair and his directness which is something he was really good at at man city well mainly at liverpool we definitely saw it at man city too i think there's a suggestion there that some of the things he really kind of tallied well for statistically from last season and some of those attributes that we're hoping to still bring to this Arsenal side, the data saying he almost certainly can. So let's take it to the tactical pad and let's talk about Raheem Sterling in a little bit more detail. Because what I've got here is him on the left, right? Because it feels like he's not going to dislodge Bakaya Saka. So if he's going to play, he's probably going to start out on the left-hand side. But we've got to mention that this is an opportunity to do something we rarely do. Take Bakaya Saka out, bring Martinelli in and play Raheem Sterling just as comfortably out on the left. Sorry, out on the right with Martinelli on the left. We can start that front three and Saka can get a rest. And if that is the starting front three in the Premier League, 
no problems, right? We're all happy with that. That is a good front three. Saka doesn't have to be played every single minute. Now, there's a couple things I'm going to refer to my notes. The first thing is that he can be a real touchline winger. And we know that Arsenal play with their wingers out on the touchline. And if we're playing a sort of pretty rigid, you know, 4-4-2 block, which is how a lot of teams defend these days, then what you want to start doing is dragging their fullbacks. No, let's get rid of that. Apologies. What you want to start doing is dragging their fullbacks out to create those spaces for the underlaps. We know that Marino will probably thrive in that. Or you want to keep them condensed, but you want to be just dragging them all the way across that more space open centrally. So being a touchline winger, very naturally, Sterling's going to fit into what Bakar Saka and our wingers are having to do. But the one thing he has done very, very well throughout his career as a touchline winger, especially at Man City, is when our fullbacks invert, Let's say we play with the double invert. We could do that. It's probably not how we're going to play. We're probably more naturally going to play with almost a three and Calafiori inverting there. We might even play with our fullbacks wide, but I'm just giving you some examples. When the ball is in this area here with a rice or in this area with a white or in this area with an Erdegaard, Sterling attacks that space. And that is true if the ball is out here to Calafiori or if that's a Zinchenko or if that's a Marino in that space to attack, you know, whatever Sterling being on the touchline can really exploit those kind of spaces, what I'm trying to say. And you'll all remember the goal that we scored just the other day against Villa. What we've got here is Saka on the ball, areas that Sterling would certainly find himself in. Now he's one-on-one -on -one with the fullback. Now Sterling might drop a shoulder, take the fullback on. At times last season for Chelsea, he still showed he had that in the locker. But often we want to recycle possession. We want to see if we can find that running behind. But Kyle Saka's quick, but he's not blisteringly fast. He's not got devastating pace. Back in the day, Sterling did, and does he still have some of that in him? Because if he does, he will make this run all day. And you can see it there. Sterling's, uh, Saka's making it. We'll show it in red. It's that run. It's that run. Like, it's that run into space. He's saying, give it to me. I'm going to run in beyond. And I'm just going to time it perfectly. Get that way to pass right. And I will find that cut back to someone across the box. Or actually, he could be on the end of it as well. He could be on the receiving end of some of those Saka cutbacks. Something he did brilliantly at Man City. When the ball's played by Odegaard into Saka... This is, it's just like Raheem Sterling on a plate. Like he will love that kind of thing. He will fit into it very much so as a touchline winger. But he's not just a touchline winger. And I think it's important to, to mention that because in his time at Liverpool, what we found was they played with more of a front two. Now, obviously, it was kind of Sturridge and Suarez. And he was picking up a lot of these play places. He's even playing kind of more of a 4 4 2 and having to use the players we got on the pitch to kind of illustrate it. But you get my point. So I wonder whether with Calafiori, who's shown he can get up and down the pitch a little bit, especially from centre, like a step forward, someone who, if you look at his comps, he's got an overlap in him. We are playing with our fullbacks a little bit wider in the hope that we can get Saka a little bit more central. I wonder whether Sterling can pick up those areas and actually be really good with his back to goal, turning in tight spaces. Look what he did for England at the Euros in 2021. He was brilliant playing in those pockets near Kane. And he's someone that I think is going to knit play together really well, you know, commit uh, defenders to making fouls to you know just uh, having to do some awkward defending and you've got the tech of players like Havertz, Erdegaard, Saka in those tight spaces even Marino who unfortunately is out for potentially two months which is a shame but you've got the players there to combine in those tight spaces and sort of work yourself positions through on goal. I think Sterling could do really, really well in those kind of central pockets. And there's evidence of it from his time at Liverpool and his time playing at Chelsea as well. But it's also, it's not Chelsea, well, at Chelsea a little bit, but mainly England. But I think it's also worth remembering that at times, if Califuri inverts, it might be Marino who's hugging that touchline or on Winery. And then you've got that potential underlap from Sterling too. So I think he fits really, really well into not only our touchline winger kind of system, but ability to tuck inside and give us a little bit more ball to feet in tight areas, committing teams in tight spaces and hoping we can find some quicker, shorter passes to get us through on goal. He's certainly got the kind of lower body strength, uh, low centre of gravity and the intelligence to play those one-twos and make things happen in tight areas. I think that's is where he could also add something to this Arsenal front line because Saka and Martinelli are still very much evolving into having that side of the game. But I think they've got it. We just haven't seen it quite as much. That 
that might be a tactical thing too. Now, the final thing he's going to add is transitional threat. Because if I just show you this, this is uh, Chelsea's average positions when they went to the Etihad. They drew 1-1. One, one. In fact, two of Chelsea's best performances last season under Pochettino came against City. In fact, three of them, because you can include the uh, the Carabao Cup game. And you can see number seven there, Raheem Sterling, one of the highest players, or the highest player for Chelsea up the pitch, because they wanted that transition threat, the ability to go from one end to the other. And I think he's going to give us that too. Arsenal are not a great counter-attacking side. Can we go in two, three passes from one end of the pitch to the other? Because Raheem Sterling knows how to position himself, not neglect his defensive duties, worked under Pep Guardiola. There's no chance you neglect your defensive duties, but find that way to spin and burst, go the other way and get through on goal. I think he might add that too. Now, for anyone who's worried about like a an attitude or anything like that, obviously he left Chelsea in unfortunate circumstances. They, they pretty much said they didn't want him and he... You know, came out quite publicly with his team and said, look, we want clarity on our future. Then he's got to move to us. It was worked out for him. It's worked out for us. It's worked out for Chelsea. We're all happy. But what I would say is that there were some really interesting quotes of Kevin De Bruyne. I think you should go, you know, read the thread. I'll, I'll post some of the screenshots here so you can see who it was that posted it. But I just feel that Kevin De Bruyne's words and what Arteta said about him recently and the way Pep Guardiola had him for so long, it's just a reminder that, yes, some unfortunate exits from well, pretty much the three clubs he's been at, Chelsea, Liverpool and City. But this is someone who's extremely highly regarded by his former, by his fellow professionals, by his former pros and, and, and managers who have worked with him. And is someone who can really generally add a lot, not just in terms of hopefully quality on the pitch, but is like a really respected figure in the game who's achieved a lot. I think Raheem Sterling, for whatever reason, maybe because he's been at all these different clubs, not ended so well what he's achieved in the game for some reason is kind of not given the credit it deserves let's get this right he has achieved an awful lot and some might even have him down as one of the Premier League greats when you look at the pure numbers he's put up and the trophies he's won. He is someone who has done the business for club and country, has won titles and trophies, and I think he can give a lot to this Arsenal team. Yes, maybe not the perfect, transformative, project-growing winger that we hoped it would be, but for a deadline day signing, someone who can have a big impact. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, people. I'd love to know what you make of Raheem Sterling. And I'm excited to see if we could see him in the North London derby for his first game.